Look at that face. If you're feeling suicidal, you've come to the right place. Let's check on everyone's favorite Bitcoin. The big, I meant to say cryptocurrency, but there you go. <laughs> yes. Yes, you, you could say I know something about the Bitcoin. Doing very well since Back's announcement of getting approval coming September 23rd, barring no more delays. Don't know if correlated, but up more than $1,000 since. Now, some people in my comment section were saying that Back is not positive for Bitcoin as people will just use it to short Bitcoin. Now they can, they can do that. But if you're using Bax, you have to hold the underlying asset at the same time. So presumably if you're shorting on a place like Bax, the idea is that you'd be long-term bullish. I'll give you an example. Let's say that you're net long and want to profit from dips, or for example, you're going both short and long in an attempt to hedge your risks. Currently, we have corrected 22% from the very peak of the market in late June, but at the worst point, nearly 35%. To put this in perspective and potential opportunity in perspective, this chart comes courtesy of Josh Rager on Twitter. Bitcoin often experiences 30% pullbacks in bull markets. And of course, because it's a bull market, the gains to be had in the days, weeks and months that followed were on average 150%. Seems like a sure deal, right? Just one thing to keep in mind though is that this chart shows late 2016 and 2017. So of course, the charts are going up. But if we are in a bull market right now, history could very easily repeat itself. Now I will make a video when I next buy Bitcoin and I made a video showing where I took profits recently, but I'm really looking for an absolute no brainer, like mid 8,000s. But I'm totally okay if we don't actually get that low. I get paid mostly in Bitcoin for the occasional sponsored video that I have. So I'm dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin anyway. I'm buying no matter what the price. Really? <laughs> Let's look at the dominance though. It's got some people talking. Why? Well, the reason is it's paused for the first time in a long time. It was back in May around this period where the alts had a little bit of sunshine and then got killed again in opportunity cost. There is somewhat of a historical precedence for resistance at this 70% level, but I don't know if that's at all uh, coincidental. I don't know if charting Bitcoin dominance really works. But if it is, if charting does work, it's not like Bitcoin doesn't have potential or a lot of headroom. Up here, this was as early as March in 2017, and that's 95% dominance, so potential long way to go. But at the same time, those ridiculous levels of dominance were well before the hype wave of literally anything that hit the market, but including some big names like EOS, XRP, little well-known project called Ethereum. But having said all that, I think for the most part, alts have bottomed. They're not losing dominance by tanking, not, not so far at least. They stay stable and it's Bitcoin that's just growing bigger and so it's looking even worse than it actually is. There was, however, a little bit of a scary situation a few days ago where, you know, we saw Ethereum under $200. Who would have thought? XRP below 30 cents, which was resistance for so long. Down as low as 25. Cardano, four and a half cents. Hate to see it. I'm gonna assume that was a small dip, a small blip, just as Bitcoin had a small blip. And for the most part, alts are still as cheap as they're gonna get, but I could easily be wrong. For three main reasons. Number one, Bitcoin dumps, then so do the alts, or at least they look like they may be able to maintain their value while Bitcoin was dumping for a little while, but ultimately that was in vain. Very much pegged to Bitcoin, not on the upside, but definitely the downside. And number two, if dominance does go this high to 95%, I can imagine more and more people are just getting, going to get fed up holding their altcoins. I know I would. Last but not least, it's quite a change in the markets. I feel like a lot of people are wiser. Would you believe it? During 2017, it was kind of edgy of me to say, alts are there for more Bitcoin. That was an edgy thing to say. And the reason for it is because on paper, a lot of alts had better, better quote unquote technology than Bitcoin. It was almost taboo to say the truth we all knew deep down inside. But now everywhere I look, the rhetoric is simply sell it when it goes up. Literally 
everywhere. Everyone only wants more Bitcoin in the end, and that does not strike me personally as a very good value proposition. You need to have the idea, I'm thinking, of adoption to really kick in FOMO. You need to have those long-term holders. But I'm not gonna pretend like if I wasn't gonna do a stroll poll right now. Alts have bottomed. Alts have a long way to fall still. I will um, put it down in the comment section below. I'll look at the results next episode. I'm not trying to annoy anyone if they do have big bags though. Я убил тех людей. Да будет так. Нет, нет, ты не такой. Нет, ты не можешь. Я буду таким, как нужно Готэму. Interestingly, somewhat related, potentially, at Bitcoin has capitulated. An account with nearly a million followers which promoted Bitcoin Cash primarily has deleted almost all posts mentioning Bitcoin Cash except for the obvious pin tweet. It has unfollowed many pro-Bitcoin Cash accounts down from 200 to just 75. And they have changed the Bitcoin white paper link from Roger Veer owned Bitcoin.com to Bitcoin.org. What is going on? In all honesty, this Twitter handle is potentially very, very valuable to some people. So maybe it switched hands with a deal that we will never have the details to. Maybe Jack Dorsey, CEO of Twitter and pro Bitcoin evangelist had it forcefully taken from them. Maybe it was the lizard people. RBTC has erupted in flames over this. No. Oh, no. Oh, I think he loves me. Yeah, I got you. I got this on camera. As far as I understand it, at Bitcoin is very valuable. It does rank very highly in Google search terms. So having this account spread pro Bitcoin's cash stuff was considered a threat to Bitcoin. <laughs> But just imagine if copyright laws applied to the name Bitcoin. It would be like having the at Coca-Cola handle owned by Pepsi. Pretty weird. Maybe even a conflict of interest. But in summation, is it alt season yet? You know what? No. Well. <laughs> now Binance has announced essentially a competitor to Libra dubbed Venus, a stablecoin. Will this website load? A stablecoin that they seek the support of local governments to get off the ground. Slightly different approach, I believe. Say, for example, in the US, they'll have a US version backed by USD, and in Great Britain, they'd have a GBP one, etc., etc. Good luck with that. And in a similar vein, I got a tweet from someone interesting today. Uh, this guy, you know, from uh, that video. The guy who supported Bitcoin Cash in its heyday also said things like Bitcoin and Litecoin were dead, uh, but that Ethereum is good, and who also again called the death of Bitcoin during the 2018 Bitcoin bottom. You know, a typical expert who you can religiously do the opposite of and make a killing. Now, why would that guy message me? Would it be to threaten me with a libel lawsuit for having made fun of him on occasion? No, but he actually wants help promoting a Libra competitor to which I politely declined, but uh, I wish them the best of luck, but this, <laughs> there's gonna be a lot of them popping up, I think. Libra partner MasterCard is building its own cryptocurrency team. Don't know if it'll be another stable coin, but uh, interesting to see. Let's end with a bit of poetry, or at least it should be, and it should also be studied in schools. Facebook is launching Libra, Binance launching Venus. Either way, someone is putting it in Uranus. Beautiful. Oh my word, it's finally here. Packs have actually been given approval. We're back in business. My body is ready. My wallet is ready. My resignation form, if I had a real job, would also be ready.